Good morning, everybody. So great to see you this morning on Facebook Live. I hope you've had a wonderful, wonderful good night's rest. And as we um, look at the Word together and we worship Jesus, that you'll be so encouraged and you'll just feel the love of God around you. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your all-encompassing love. I thank you for the way that you love us so faithfully. And even when we are unaware or haven't stopped just to contemplate you, that you are contemplating us for your thoughts are good thoughts towards us. And you watch over the affairs of your household. You never slumber nor sleep. How amazing, how amazing. We thank you, Jesus, for your work on the cross that we have eternal life. Such kindness. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the anointing. Thank you that you lead us into all truth, that you guide us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you comfort us. You are the great comforter. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you teach us and point us to Jesus. And Jesus, you point us to the Father. We love your ways. Come and quiet and all scrambling of thoughts now. We close off every vain imagination and anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of who you are, O oh God. We bless you. We love you, Father. Amen. Amen. We live in a time of many distractions. But you know what? God is so kind. Just going to put the music a little softer. Oops, wrong way. There we go. God is so kind and he is the one that leads us into all truth. I woke up, I went to bed last night thinking about this and woke up with it again this morning about the teaching of the anointing. So I suddenly just remembered the days that my husband spoke at length about the anointing. It was one of his most favorite topics was the anointing. And the more I thought about it, the more the scriptures started to come back to remembrance that he has anointed us to preach good news, to bind up the brokenhearted, and to set the captives free. That the anointing is Jesus Christ inside of us. And at first I was a little bit critical and thinking what is wrong that we don't hear teachings on the blood or on the anointing. And then I started to have a look at a book on the anointing and I realized at the opening of this book, this man wrote it so clearly and so perfectly. He said a lot of people confuse the anointing with culture. So in the days where preachers shouted, shouted and marched up and down, we still have some of them today and they have to mop their foreheads all the time because they're perspiring and... They even add like a sound at the end of every uh, sentence. It's very Pentecostal. But um, there are loads of people on the earth that will experience or recognize that as the anointing. So anointing is not about the way that you preach, nor is it about volume. So sometimes we think if we get fired up and we're going at a speed that the more we get there, the more the anointing is flowing. It's not that neither. The anointing is a person, but also the administration of the character and the power 
of heaven and of God and of the Trinity. And how do we get anointing or how do we get anointed? We get anointing and anointed by His presence. Anointing isn't something that just happens on the platform. Anointing is what is incubated in your history with Him. And I really felt this morning just to minister to those that feel like they've lost the anointing for the platform or they've lost the anointing to do what they did at first. I don't think there's anything worse than being at a party and everybody's having fun and they're getting more and more loosened up as they are obviously having a couple of drinks and you are stone cold sober. <laughs> they look ridiculous and you feel more and more miserable. And so it is with the work of the Holy Spirit. And that is why the word says, do not be drunk with wine in which there is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit brings you into a place of boldness and joy. And we have days now until we come to the, again to the remembrance of the day of Pentecost. When there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we are not looking back to an upper room. We are looking with eyes wide open and hearts unzipped for the end time outpouring that has been promised us. That there'll be signs in the heavens and signs on the earth. And I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, on your men servants and your maid servants. So the first outpouring was with the tongues of fire. The second outpouring is going to be about great signs and wonders that is going to be performed through the children of God and the people of God. But maybe along the way you feel like you lost your, the anointing of God upon your life and you start, your wheels started to go slower and slower and your passion and compassion began to dwindle and to wane and you got used to sitting and just um, getting a... a, a a touch from heaven and not an overflow of his grace and it's like taking a coal away from the fire the more you stay away from the fire the dimmer it becomes and so the anointing of God is cultivated in your relationship with him and even your times of separation unto him Anointing flows where there is a pause and you wait on the Lord and you get fresh manna, fresh anointing, fresh oil, fresh um, wine, suitable for the age and the season that you find yourself in. Marching up and down and getting excited, which I still do at times, is not necessarily to show that the anointing has increased. The anointing will increase as we lean against the breast of our beloved. As we allow him to share his secrets with us. As we allow him to come by the Holy Spirit and tend the garden of our lives. Joy on top of brokenness is just a band-aid strip. But when you come and you say, Father, heal my places of disappointment and delay. Let me not eat on the scandalon that holds me back. The scandalon is um, offenses. That we forgive one another and we move in to a place of holiness unto the Lord. That we're not getting involved with other people's growth, but we're looking about our growth. That we do not spurn that that Father has given us, but that we enlist again and say, here I am, Lord, use me. 
And so as we are counting down the days to Pente the remembrance of Pentecost, may we start to welcome the Lord to come. Let him tend your garden. Let him come and pull out those things by the roots. Some of you know that I had this incredible experience while we, Lionel and I drove from the church to Woolworths on the main road, Fishhook. It's about two blocks away from where we had just been ministering. And the Lord said to me, I'm so changing the way that you do church, Rose. And I said, yes, Lord, you really are. And then he said to me, do you know how deep the roots have been? And I said, no, Lord. And he showed me a dandelion and the length from the, from the ground to the flower was this long. But then he started with a little garden fork to unearth this dandelion and the taproot was double the length of the, the stalk or the stem and the flower. And I said, gosh, Lord, those are deep roots and what were they? And the Lord said, they, it's Pentecostalism and charismatic charismania or charismatic and I said Lord but surely you love Pentecost I love Pentecost and he said I love Pentecost too Rose but it's the ism where people are taught to have a certain culture in the way that they worship and praise me that um, becomes important more important than my presence and so he said Pentecostalism is about having a certain waiting for a certain shake and a certain should be do before you move in the things of the spirit. Please don't think that I am being rude by saying that because I do feel that the, we should wait for the Holy Spirit. But how we wait for the Holy Spirit has been um, um, shaped by culture. And I said, Lord, what does uh, charismatic look like? And he said, that too has been so hyped up. It's name it, claim it, frame it, teachings, this person's teachings, that person's teachings, notches on your belt, epaulets of, look at all I know in the teaching movements. Charismatic anointing is also about bringing everybody forward and having to lay hands on everybody i'm not saying that's wrong neither it says that we to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover but when it becomes a system it sometimes is devoid of his presence and then the lord said to me and then i said to the lord well what is it that you want us to be building and he said i want you to build around my presence when the presence of the Lord comes in your home, in your time with him, even when you're walking in your garden, it moves everything of the old out of the way and makes all things new, brings you up to speed, fills you again with new and fresh anointing, the oil of, of joy and the oil of gladness, the heart of merriment, the heart that has no offense, the heart that loves God, the heart that's not rude, the heart that's not in a competition, the heart that is long suffering. Just go and look at Corinthians 13 and then we will know what the anointing looks like. So may our cry be anoint our heart anoint my mind, anoint my lips, anoint my walk, not for when I'm on a platform or in my church, but anoint me that I may overcome, anoint me with a capacity for your word, anoint me with a love that breaks yokes, anoint me with power in my mouth that when I speak, I speak with authority and that authority breaks down every resistance and every dividing wall. Speaking with authority is not about being bossy. Speaking with authority is speaking what the Father is speaking. It's not about 
uh, it's not about telling people what to do. It's telling them what Jesus says. It's telling them what the word says. It's letting the word shape us. It's letting the, the rhema of God come around us. It's, um, the anointing is what brings promotion. And promotion does not come from the north, the south, the east, the west, or the will of man. It comes by God. Do not get involved in people's schemes. Do not get involved in, in uh, man-made methods, but wait and tarry for the Holy Spirit and the anointing. Can you lose the anointing? I think you can. You can lose it through sin. You can even lose it through grumbling. We even saw Moses' um, uh, sister, Miriam, how she was consumed with leprosy. I believe that sin and sickness go hand in hand. And the Father says, think on these things. These things that are good and lovely and pleasing and acceptable before God. Do not meditate on things that will trip you up. Do not get involved in man's conspiracies. In spite of the conspiracies that are happening on the earth, we are preparing the bride. We are getting ourselves ready for that great day, the great feast of the Lord. We are preparing ourselves to see the biggest harvest, not only just to see the harvest, but be part of bringing in a harvest in this day and age that will get its own momentum. When I went to Toronto in 1975, there was an outpouring of the river for the children of God. And pastors came from around the world because they were dry, because they were wanting more. No, it wasn't in 75. I'm so sorry. It was in 95. And um, I got married in 75, in 1995. And they were hungry and they were thirsty and they felt like they'd been in a desert. They'd been through some revivals or they'd been through some uh, infillings and refillings as we had uh, people like Colin Urquhart come from the other nations and we had, uh, we had uh, revival meetings. But then eventually those meetings peter out and when you look again, you feel like you've gone back to same old, same old. But now, as I went there and I saw men in three priest suits that once again had come to a form of godliness but denying the power of, of the outpouring of Jesus' blood and the anointing and the Holy Spirit. And at first they were probably a little bit concerned about what they saw. And many times people major on the excess and... I want you to know whether you like the vessel or not, it's the truth that we need to seek. And if they bring truth, that is what you want to hold on to. And so the body of Christ started to be revived and whole groups of, of, of uh, churches started to be part of this end time anointing. And so we've been going since then till now and I want to offer to you that many of us felt like, really? So what is next, Lord? We can't go back and play in a river. We can't, we can't um, dredge up something that God has done and he's moved on with. But we can start to look. What is it? What is it? What is it, Lord? What is it? How do I get ready for what you're about to do, O oh God? Lord, I do not want to miss the day of your visitation. Taking off the old mantles, pushing in to a mantle with a different smell, with a different outworking. You're not going to find it out there. You're going to find it when you shut the door and allow him to put a new and a fresh anointing on him, on you. An anointing that will bring healing to the brokenhearted and set the captives free. So our cry is, oh, anoint us, oh God. Anoint us. For a new day, anoint us for an end time. 
You know, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so remember, there's also that scripture that goes straight on from that and says, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of the, the, their way of life and imitate their faith. This is from Hebrews. For there is continuity in this message. Dear friends, it says in Jude, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. The message of the cross will never change. The blood of Jesus avails for you today, tomorrow, and into eternity. But may we ask for fresh anointing may we press in for a new portion may we hold on to the call that has been put around us on and on us may we be yoked with Jesus and the work of heaven and not man's order of the divine may we hear him May we see him, may we speak what he speaks, and may we do what he is doing. You are a vessel unto his glory. Fresh anointing, fresh anointing. Fresh anointing, that is what is needed. As the church doors have closed, we have been in a literal Passover as the blood is, is realized in a new way and we are waiting for a fresh anointing. An anointing that will move governments, an anointing that will restructure what God has put in place and not what man has put in place. We are the place of calling to heaven for the supernatural works of God to be manifest in the earth and on the earth. In this lockdown, all competitions have been cancelled. All um, loftiness of ideas has been put on the back burner. This is your day and this is your hour to take let him take you by your hand and walk you into a new dimension. The word says doing the things that you did at first. Take time alone with him. Find a place to be quiet and to receive from him. Uh, wash not just your hands, but let him wash your heart. Of the delays and the disappointments, I want to encourage you today that the anointing, which is Jesus Christ, the anointed one. The anointing that is on you is not going to cause your children to, to lose out and go to hell when the world is being saved by your, by your ministry. Father says, as you build his house, he will build your house. He is watching over the affairs of your household. Uh, and there have been many tears, many tears. Pastors come under the biggest, biggest attack. Leaders that are in fivefold ministry and weep at night over the state of even their own families when everybody else thinks it so well. But Father says, I want to, I want to fill you with new hope this day. I want to renew your strength, man and woman of God. My burden, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As you have brought up your children in my ways, they will not depart. I will call them back unto myself, says the Father. And that scripture that says me and my household will serve the Lord will be your reality. Then I say, I'm saying this, don't try and make them into little Christians. Call them. To be anointed with power from on high. Just because they don't do what the world does doesn't make them any difference. 
They need a power encounter with heaven. And so our prayers as we, those that are walking in fivefold ministry is visit our home, Lord, visit our families, visit our children, visit our grandchildren, bring your salvation to the ends of to the whole, the whole lump and the whole loaf, Father. One day when we still had elders, an elder said to me that one of our children didn't greet them. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Maybe they were distracted. And they said, well, being the pastors, your children need to be well behaved. <laughs> In their personic voice. And I said to them, I want my children to behave because it's an outworking of their love for Jesus, not because their parents are the pastors. The love of God will bring them in. We are stepping into a day of great salvation. I say again of household salvation. I also want to say to you that there is a great healing coming upon the fivefold ministry and those that are called into leadership on your bodies. Your body has become weak. You can't do the planes. You can't walk the distance. You can't keep up the pace. God says, come and rest in me. And that every condition that is named will bow its knee to the name of Jesus. He says, I come to kiss you with the kisses of heaven. I've come to renew your strength. I've come to lift you up. I've come to reestablish you. I've come to add to you. I've come to make you the head and not the tail. I've come to give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. I come so that you won't feel like you're just pulling yourself through and just making it. No. He says, I come because this is the day of my favor. And in my day of favor, you will eat of the fat of the land in the area of my presence and my anointing. And instead of limping, you'll be leaning on the arm of your beloved. So today, the Lord removes every arrow out of your back. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's okay. As you're watching this morning, just let the Lord Remove the barbs, remove the daggers, the careless words that came against you and made you feel like a nobody and brought shame. And the Father is peeling off shame right now. Oh, the love of Jesus and the blood that washes white than snow. The Father's healing you from every phone call and every letter that said, sorry, moving on. We call it the Dear Johnny letter. Father's healing you. Father's healing you from those that manipulated and controlled that, that God gave you and you suddenly felt like you wanted to move to an island <laughs> or find a regular job. We've had so many knocks in the spirit. Every time you get up, something else happens. I was listening last night to an old message by Gwen Shaw, who, head, who was the head of End Time Handmaidens and Servants. She had written 10 books and one day, their ministry and their home burned down to the ground. The books were destroyed. And they lost everything. I 
And she said, you know what? When you call to do what God has called you to do, and it's all burnt up, you realize that nothing else matters but your relationship with him. She even said to the Lord, Lord, didn't you like my books? <laughs> you burnt them up. <laughs> so I want you to know what people say or what people think of you doesn't matter today. As you step out of your grave clothes and you step in to his new mantle. I feel the anointing so strongly as I'm standing here holding on to the table. Father, by your Holy Spirit, Will you mantle us with the mantles that are needed for this end time anointing? We leave behind everything that consumes us. Without you, we can do nothing. We say like the patriarchs of old, unless you go with me, we don't want to go. Increase your presence. I sense that there is a transaction happening even in the heavenlies right now. Right now. I see tethers that tethered you being cut loose. I see this beautiful crystal receptacle in heaven being poured out golden oil being poured over you fresh oil keep your lamps filled i would not presume to interfere with the Father's business. He is busy with you. He is busy with each one of us. Nothing I say could add to that right now. Take our hearts, O oh God.
Father, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your new wine. We thank you for revelation of the fullness of Holy Spirit. We thank you for fresh impartation. As we linger in your presence, O oh God, will you just keep filling us? Will you keep filling us on this day of your power? Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. I don't know about you, but his presence is so tangible. And I don't want him to go away. I'm not going to go any further other than to say, enjoy his presence. Linger with him. We have a call on you, that rust and moth cannot destroy. God bless you.